Hey there, this is Mahmoud Hassan and welcome to my Dart programming language tutorial. Dart is the main programming language to develop cross-platform mobile application using Flutter framework. In this video tutorial, I will discuss the fundamental features of Dart programming language. If you know any other programming language, then you will find Dart is really easy to understand. So no more talking, let's begin. To install Dart SDK in your system, please visit it https and dart.dev and here you will see that there is a get dart link, just click that on that menu and here you will see there is three version, Windows, Linux and Mac. So if you are using Windows, just follow the instruction to install Dart SDK in your system. As I use Mac, so I followed this Mac instruction and I already installed Dart in my system. Currently there is version 2.3 which I am also using for this lesson as well. To write Dart code you can choose any editor but I personally prefer Visual Studio Code Editor. So if you want to use Visual Studio Code Editor you can install from this web page and there is also Mac, Windows and Linux version as I am using Mac so I uh, install the Mac version. Also, if you do not want to install the Dart SDK or the Visual Studio Code Editor in your system, if you just want to check out Dart by just typing the code in a web editor, you can just use the Dartpad. So the address is dartpad.dartlang.org. Here you will see this interface and for example here is a main function and suppose here I write print hello world 1 and I just click run and it will show, compile the program and show the output in the right side window. So if you want you can also use this dart pad but I personally prefer to use Visual Studio Code Editor and run dart code in the system. So currently I open my Visual Studio Code Editor and here you will see the Visual Studio Code Editor and to highlight the syntax you should install a dart extension. To install dart extension in the Visual Code Studio Code Editor you have to click view then here you will see extension just click on it and here you, if you search dart you will see dart 3.1.0 there is an extension which I already installed. So if you are using Visual Studio Code Editor you just uh, find out this dart extension and click install and it will be installed in your Visual Studio Code Editor. And then if you click view explorer then you will see this interface as well. So currently I created this playground.dart. So dart code extension is dart. So I created this playground.dart file in my desktop demo directory where I will write some code and execute in the terminal. So if you do not see any terminal window in Visual Studio Code Editor, just click terminal and then click new terminal. So here you will uh, get the current directory location automatically. So if I want to run this playground.dart, so what I have to type dart dart and then the file name. So playground.dart in my case and if I click run, I, I can see the output of the program here. So I do not need to open this terminal window uh, separately. I just you can, I just can use this uh, built-in terminal feature in Visual Studio Code Editor. Dart is a static type programming language. It is also a compiled programming language. So static type means if you define a variable as a string, you cannot assign other values like integer or double on that string type variable. Though there is an exception like there is a uh, type called dynamic which you can use to store any kind of values. I will discuss that on later. Another thing is that Dart supports two type of compilation one is called AOT or ahead of time another is called JIT or just in time compilation. So when we want to run a Dart program we have to compile it and then uh, run but it happens automatically. So when we uh, write a Dart program and we just run it automatically complies on the fly and this is called just in time compilation and when we uh, deploy our final product then it will be compiled as AOT or aid of time, time compilation with some optimization. 
let's write a dart program so every dart program starts with a um, with the main function so let's write a main function void main so here main is a function and void means this function returns nothing if we want we can avoid this void uh, so it is option also that means uh, if there is no return type that is called this function does not return anything so let's uh, define a variable so i type for first name and here i assign my name mahmoud and then uh, suppose i want to uh, define another variable last name so in this case i will type string last name asan and now i want to print this so first name then last name so if i uh oh, here i have to put a plus sign for string concatenation and if i want to run this program i have to type dart playground dot dart here, here you will see the output mahmud space asan so what does it happen in here so at the first line number two here i define a variable using the var keyword so var means a variable and the variable name is first name where I have assigned Mahmoud as the value. So when you define a variable like this way, Dart compiler automatically guess that this is a string type values because and this is called type infer inference. And in the second type, uh, second uh, line, the third line, we define the variable as a string type and which we mention it in the before. So if you defined uh, variable like this way that is string last name you cannot assign other values like if i type 2 it will show an error but in the first case if i type 2 here it will not show an error in here because in that case it will uh, understand that this is a uh, integer value so you have to rem uh, remember this thing in dart programming language that it supports both uh, type inference and statically type defined so when we type dart playground.drt there is just in time compilation happens so this code will compile on the fly and then it will run and we can see the output in the terminal if there will be an error we can see that error also in here another thing is that all the built-in dart uh, libraries like uh, built-in types collection and other core functionality for every dart program basically is defined in a package that is called uh dart dot uh, colon core package so if you want to import you have to type this uh, import then single code dart colon then core uh, package but the thing is that if i run this program again nothing will uh, be changed it will run as usual but the thing is that this dart colon core package automatically imported so for this case or normal cases we do not need to import this dart colon core package it will be imported in every dart program automatically so let's write another program in this program we want to take input from user so for this input output operation we have to import a library that is called io library so i have to import then dart colon io and now let's write a main function and here i want to first show user that you have to type your name so i i have to write a code like a standard out dot write uh, line and here i will uh, write what is your name and then a question mark and then i will take the input from user so for this reason i will type a string name and then a standard in dot read line sync and then i will print that name so my name is dollar name so let's run this program first so you see in the screen it is showing what is your name if i type uh, mahmoud asa you will be seeing that it is showing my name is mahmoud asan so basically this is standard out and is standard in this uh, library is defined in this dart colon io package so at the first line we are showing user that the, by writing standard out dot right line that means it this line is shown in the terminal then in this line is standard in dot read line sync 
this when uh, the program found this line it will wait for the user to give an input so when we get the input from user we assign that variable which is a string in this name variable and finally we just using the uh, built-in print method or print function to output the name in the terminal and here you will see in, within the string we are using a dollar sign and the variable name so this is called string interpolation so within the string we change a variable with the real value we can write comment in three separate way in dart in a dart program so if you want to write a comment in line then you have to use two forward slash that is called inline comment if you want to write block comment then you have to use forward slash star and you have to in the comment using another star and forward slash so here we can write multiple line of comment and another comment is three forward slash that is called documentation so that will be used as a document of for your program there are two type programming language one is called strongly typed another is called dynamic type so in strongly typed programming language like c plus plus java or swift the type of a variable is known at compile time and another type programming language that is called dynamic type like python ruby or javascript in these programming languages the type of a variable is known at runtime so in dart programming language there are five basic type like int double string bool and dynamic these four types are fundamental type and dynamic is a uh, dynamic type that means we can uh, change the value at runtime with different type values so in this example let's define a variable so int for integer amount one is the variable name where we have assigned 100 then in the second line we have defined var amount to 200 so in this case the by using the var keyword we define a variable amount too so as it is 200 that is an integer value so the uh, the dart compiler automatically knows knows that that this is a integer value and integer variable so uh, dart compiler make this amount to an integer so next time if we uh, assign other value like double or string in this amount to it will show an error and in the third line we have just print this amount one and amount two then we define another variable using double and put a double value and then in the uh, second cases we have defined the double variable but using the var keyword so the variable value type will be uh, determined at the compile time then we also print that value as well then we define another variable name one which is a string type we define in uh, by mentioning a string and in that second cases we using uh, we define name two as a string variable using var keyword but here the type inference occurred here we define is it true one uh, using the bool keyword that means this is a boolean type variable where we have assigned true this is a boolean value and then using the var keyword we define another variable is it true to where we define false value which is also a boolean value so both of these variable are boolean type and finally we define a variable weak variable and where we have used the key we use the keyword dynamic so this weak variable is a dynamic type variable so the value uh, value type can be defined at the run type so at the first time we have assigned 100 and the second type uh, we have assigned dart programming which is a string and the first time it was a integer so let's run this program we see that this program is run perfectly well so here we see that amount 1 100 amount 2 200 this line this print line is printed in here then we printed the floating point values using this line print so we are seeing that this values is also printed correctly here we are using this my name is this thing is also printed in here and we can see this true and false these two variable the boolean type variable values are also printed in here 
perfectly well and finally this dynamic type weak variable which we have assigned 100 it is printed in here and the next time we change the value of this weak variable as a string type we we have seen that this is also printing correctly that means this weak variable which is dynamic type we can assign any type of value at any time so this is the uh, fundamental or primitive type in Dart programming language and one thing you have to remember that Dart is an object oriented programming language and everything is object in here even the null type so null type means if we assign here weak variable and just put null that means there is nothing and if I just type print weak variable in this case and let's try to run this program and you see it is showing now so even this null type is also an object so everything is object in dart programming language this integer value this variable everything is object even this function is also an object which is a subtype of the function class we can define a string variable using single quote or double quote so if you start defining a string using single code you have to in that string using single code as well the same rule is applied for double quotes as well so here s1 is defined a string variable using single code and s2 is defined using double code in the s3 variable we using a single code and we also want that there is an apostrophe within the its keyword so in this case we have to use a backward slash to uh, separate this single code within the a string but if we are just using this double code to define a string we can just uh, replace this uh, special character by the single code and finally if you want to define a raw string raw string mean if there is a special character that is new line character suppose it will not be evaluated so to define a raw string you have to just put a r in front of the a string so let's run this program you see the single quote this string is printed double quote string is also printed and here it's you see that this apostrophe is showing here nicely also for the s4 variable as well and in the final case the raw string you see this uh, new line character is not evaluated because it is defined as raw string by using the r in front of the string string interpolation means to replace a variable's value actual value within a string so here we have defined a variable age where we have assigned 35 an integer value and in the second string variable we replace this age variables value within the string by using this dollar sign so that means when you want to interpolate in a string just use the dollar sign in front of the variable name within a string so if we run this program we see the output is showing correctly that my age is 35 we can define multi-line string in dart programming language using either three single quotes and ending with three single quotes or starting with three double quotes and ending with three double quotes so if i run this program you see it is showing the multi-line string in the terminal type conversion is a very important topic in any programming language sometimes we we need to convert an string to an integer and sometimes we need to convert an integer to a string to convert an string to an integer value you can use the parse method of int object so here we are passing and string one and this method parts will convert this string one to an integer one and assign that value in this one variable in the next line we are using the built-in assert function to verify that so here we are verifying that if one equal to integer one if it is not true then it will uh, show an error in the terminal similarly if we want to convert an string to double we can use the parse method defined in the double object so let's run this program you will see there is no problem no uh, error is showing that means this uh, parsing occurred correctly but if we want to change the string like this string there is no no integer value within this string then what happened let's write this program you see it is showing an error that uh, this parse method tried to convert this string to an radix 10 number but it is it found that there is str characters so that means it cannot convert this str to an 
integer value that's why it will be thrown an error and this exception is called format exception so you have to make sure that if you want to convert an integer or double value a string value to an integer or double primitive value then you have that string with that integer or double value similarly if we want to convert from integer to a string we can use that here one dot two string method so that means as i said before that everything in dart programming language is an object so that means here the numeral value one is also an object so we can use this two string method of that object so here we are typing one dot two string and we are converting this integer value to an string value and assign this in one as a string variable and in later we also using this pi values that is double value to as a string so here we have to use to string as fixed two so here basically we want to convert this four floating point number to two fixed point floating point number so let's run this program and you see there is no error so that means this one integer is converted to as a string which we are verifying in here by putting single quote outside of one that means it's an a string and it uh, asserted correctly similarly here we converted this double uh, value to two fixed point uh, double string so and we are verifying here that if this is as a string with two fixed point uh, fixed point number and we found that yes it is also asserted correctly in here so that means 3.1.4 now is an a string value so this is how we can convert any type to any type in dart programming language when we define a variable we can define that variable as a constant type that means during the runtime we cannot change the value of that variable so to define a variable as constant in dart programming language we have to use the keyword const so here we have defined a variable a const num and this is an integer constant because uh, there i have put a zero which an integer so by type inference the compiler will make this variable as integer constant similarly a const bool is a boolean constant and a const string is an integer uh, string constant then we are printing these three variables here and also the next three line we are checking the runtime type that means what type the compile uh, created during the runtime so let's uh, run this program you see we are we are seeing zero true a cons string and the type is int bool and string so this is how we can define constant type in dart programming language suppose we defined a variable like int and num and did not assign any value within this variable if we just use the print function and try to print the value of this num variable let's run this program and see what is shown in the terminal it is showing that there is null that means there is no value assigned in this variable so you have to keep in mind that if you define a variable or object but did not assign any very values on it that means that's an uh, empty so it is it contain the null object we can also externally use null in this case so if i run this program again you see there is no change so that means if we did not explicitly assign null value within a variable it automatically assign if there is no real value assigned to this variable if you know other programming language like javascript c++ swift or python all the standard operators will work in dart programming language so for example if you want to add two values you can just use the plus sign for negative uh, minus you can use minus sign for uh, if you want to see that if there is any reminder or not you can use the modulus operator that is also called percentage operator in some programming language 
and if you want to check relational value like uh, if two values are equal or not for example here using this if logic we are checking that if num equal to zero or not then print zero if for not equal to you can use uh, not equal to this operator and for greater than or equal to you can use this greater than and equal sign and less than and equal sign for less than or equal to operator if you want to uh, use any short shortcut value like for example if for here we are using num multiplication equal to 2 it means that i want to assign num equal to num multiply by 2 for example here we are using this shortcut value so uh, we put this multiplication value in here in front of the equal sign and and then we are passing to that means this is num equal to num multiply by 2 similar thi thing you can use using the plus minus like that and a dart programming language also supports unary operator that means you can if you use c plus plus java or javascript you can use this unary operator like plus plus num this means that increment uh, num value 1 by 1 you can this is called post increment uh, pre increment and this is called post increment post increment both are unary operator and you can also use another shortcut value like plus equal 1 similar uh, similar to this unary operator and for logical operator you can use this double ampersand sign so that means this logical n and for logical or you can use this double uh, bar sign so in python we use this we use only and and or the the physical the english keyword like and and uh, and and or in python but in, in javascript in dart we can use this logical and and logical or operator to make two condition based in within an if statement so here we are writing a code like if num greater than 200 and num less than 203 then print 200 to 202 so the here we can use the logical and operator and in this case both of this part and this part should be true to make this thing happen for not equal to operator we can just use this sign and then equal sign so if i run this program you see everything is uh, showing correctly in the terminal null error operator is one of the important operator in dart programming language basically this kind of operator is existed in many modern programming languages like swift kotlin and in dart there are three variation of this operator so let's discuss so suppose we want to define a class so in this class now there is a property we declare that is another num and where we have assigned 10 and let's define the main function so here i want to create an object of this class num so bar n equal to num so to create object of a class in dart programming language you just have to use the class name and the parenthesis then the object will be automatically created so an instance of this num class is created and assigned in this variable that is n so n is an object of num class let's define another variable so what we actually want we want to assign this value in this number variable suppose this kind of value comes from another area suppose we are using an api from this api we get this kind of a json object and the json object may be there exist a variable and we want to get that number so we have to make sure that this n object is not null so how we do that normally what we write if n not equal to null then number equal to n dot num and just print the number so normally it's a common programming practice that we check that if the object is not null then access the object properties like it here so if i run this program uh, dart playground you see it is working perfectly hmm. suppose this n object is null we remove this num class name and if i run this program again you see it is showing this number 
has a null object so there is nothing basically when uh, this n object is null this thing will not access but if i just remove this if part and if i run this program again you see now there is an error thrown that is no such method error so basically uh, we are accessing n dot num but n is null that's why it will throw an error and the program will terminate in here so there is a shortcut in uh, dart programming langu language using that we can avoid this if statement so what we have to write we just have to write uh, instead of n dot num we have to write n a question mark then dot then num so if i run this program again you see in this case it is showing nothing because uh, uh, there is no n object n object is null that's why this thing is not work and number equals null that is shown in here and if there is an object suppose we put in the we create an object in here the instance of num class and if i run this program again you see now it is showing 10 so the number is 10 so basically this null hour operator means that if there is an object so if n is an object and if the object property num is accessible then just do it so that means if n is an object and if n is a valid object then access the property named num and assign the value from num to here but if n is not an object if n is a null object then just escape this there is another variation of this null error operator so in case if this n is not a valid object there there is nothing happen in here right the number will remain null as it is defined but what we want if the n object is null we want a default value have to be assigned in number so how we can do that the shortcut way to do that is you use a double question mark and assign a default value for example we want to default value zero so let's save this program and run again so now you see that when we run this program the number is printing as zero that means when this part is null then this part will be executed but if we just again uh, put this num here and if i run this program again then you see that 10 is printed so that means now n is a valid object that has a property of num so that value is assigned in here but in case n is a, is not a valid object then in that case the default value uh, 0 will be assigned in number the third variation of this null error operator is like this suppose we define a variable number now it is null if i just print this number and save this program and run you see it is showing null but what we want that we want to make a condition like if the variable or object is null we want to assign a default value so wh what we can do that we just use double question mark then a equal sign all together and put a default value if i run this program again you see now it is showing 100 if i run this program after the first print statement you see the number 100 is showing in the second case as well so here it is happening is that the when the number is not a valid object that means the number is null then this 100 will be assigned in this variable and that is permanent okay so you have to keep in uh, keep mind in this three variation of the null error operator because uh, if you do not check null sometimes your program may crash so if you know this null error operator and you can if you can use it wisely then it can save in many cases in your program there is another operator called ternary operator in javascript c c plus plus java so that operator is also existed in dart programming language so for example here we defined a program int x equals 100 and var result equals x reminder 2 equal to 0 so that means if uh, we, we want to define this 100 I mean the value of x by 2 so 
if there is any reminder and if that reminder is zero then print this even but if the reminder is not zero then print odd so in the next time we are printing the result so if i run this program you see in this case it is printing even because x equals 100 which is uh, divided uh, which is reminded by 2 and there is no reminder so that means this condition met and the first part of the of this ternary operator is executed but if i just make it suppose 101 and run this program again you see now this condition is not met that's why this odd is printed there is a type test operator in dart programming language for example let's define a variable integer x equal 100 or maybe var x equal 100 so we want to know that if if x is an integer type then just print something so how we can write that program so we have to type if then x is int then print integer so let's save this program and run you see as this condition is true that means we want to check that whether the variable of x is integer type that's why we have written that if x is in that means if x is an integer then print integer and it is true but if we change the value to suppose a double value and if i run this program again then this condition is not true that's why we did not see any integer is printed in the terminal sometimes we want to write a program with some condition that means if a certain condition at is true then do something and if certain condition is false then don't do something so in a uh, dart programming language we can write conditional code using if else if and else operator so that means here let's define a program first we define a variable integer number equals 100 so then we are using the reminder operator we are checking that if this condition is true that means if this number is divided by 2 with no dividend that means equal to 0 then print even if not then if it is divided by 3 then print odd and in other cases that means if this first condition is not true second condition is not true the default cases then print confused so let's run this program first so here it is showing even then i am i put here 90 and it is showing even again so if i put here uh, 91 it is showing confused so in this scenario the first condition when made then the second and third condition that means else if and else block will not be executed but if this block is not true then this then the program will check this block if it is not true then it will check the default block so this is how we can write if else if and else condition in dart program there is another way we can write if else a statement in dart programming language and in this case we we have to use the switch statement so basically switch works similar like if else condition so here we are defining a variable number where we have assigned value 0 and then in the switch statement within the parenthesis we are checking this number variable and within the curly basis this is the body of this switch statement we are checking that if the value of this variable is 0 then print this and break then break from this switch statement in case this condition is not true then check this condition if case equals 1 then do this thing and uh, break from the switch statement if no none of the case is true then just uh, do the default condition so here let's run this program it is showing even because this condition made so if i put here 1 and save this program and run you see now it is showing odd because this condition is not made that's why this condition made that's why it is showing here but in case if i put different value and run this program it is showing confused because 0 and 1 is not made this condition is not made that's why the default condition is executed
looping means we want to execute a task for a finite number of time repeatedly so there are basically five kinds of loop in dart programming language so the first loop is the standard for loop stand dart for loop it's similar like in javascript so for example we want to print uh, 1 to 10 hmm. so how we can do that let's write a standard for loop so you have to pass type for then within parenthesis let's declare a variable var i equals 1 then semicolon this is the first part the or initialized part then we write the condition i less than equals to 10 so as long as i less than or equals to 10 then run this loop and then the increment or decrement part so here i have written pre increment plus plus i so these are the increment or decrement part so that means the when the this program is run this part will be in, uh, executed first then it will check the condition in here and after and then the body will be executed then the program uh, goes to here and uh, increment the value of i and then check the condition again if the condition is true then it will break from the loop otherwise it will continue the loop so if i just put print i and run this program you see it is showing 1 to 10 so this is the standard for loop there is another for loop that is called for in loop suppose we have an array so var numbers we define a variable numbers and using the square bracket it is a shortcut that means it's an array we define some values within this array 1 2 3 and we want to print all of these values so using for in loop we can do it easily so here we are writing for then var n in numbers and within the body print n so here it is meaning that for uh, var n in numbers so the value of n will be first time one second time two and third time three it will be uh, executed as long as the array contains some values so if i run this program you see it is showing one two three so this is the standard for in loop if we want to uh, use this array using the standard for loop we can do that also for example for var i equals zero i less than uh, numbers dot uh, length then plus plus i and here print uh, numbers i so if i run this program you see in this case one two three is again printed because we are using the standard for loop there is another loop that is called for each loop so basically for each and higher order function so for example here uh, like before we have defined an array with an some integer values so we want to print the each of these value right so we can do that using number dot for each and then here we have to define a function so for example we want to access each of these value right so we can do that like uh, in and then we can use an arrow function what is the arrow function i will discuss later we can also use a normal function here as well but in this case it looks elegant to use array function and we just write code like this way if i run this program again you see uh it is showing oh sorry here i have di i did a mistake it, it have to be it has to be n so if i run this program you see one two three is printing so basically this for each is an higher order function because it takes another function as parameter this full thing is actually a function but we have written in the short form that is called arrow function i will discuss this thing in later in the function part but just keep in mind that there is another way for looping especially in array or object using the for each uh, loop if you think this arrow function looks a bit complicated for you you can do another thing you can define another function like more print num and here is a parameter and just print this num 
Mm. And now instead of this arrow function, just pass this num function, print num function reference. And if I run this program again, you see the same output one, two, three. Basically, we are passing this function as a parameter of this for each higher order function. There is another loop or the number four types of loop is called while loop. Suppose we have defined a variable num equals five and we want to print the value of num unless it is zero. So we have to write while then the condition within parentheses that num greater than zero. So as long as num greater than zero, execute the body and then we first printing the value of num and then we decrease the value of num by one if i run this program you see uh, it is showing nothing because i did not save so let's run again uh, then you see that it is showing five four three two one there is another variation of this while loop so instead of using the condition before we have to write do in here and after the body uh, curly braces you can write the condition the while condition after this uh, curly braces so if i run this program again you see the same output five four three two one if within a loop for a certain condition we want to uh, terminate the loop we can do this do this by using break statement so here in this loop this loop will run 10 times but here we have written a condition if i greater than 5 then just break otherwise print i if i run this program you see 0 to 5 is printed and then when the value of i becomes 6 that is the it is uh, greater than 5 then this break statement executed and the loop is terminated so this is how we can use break con break statement in any loop to terminate the loop suppose we want to write a program to print the odd numbers or even numbers so in our case we want to print the odd number so we have written a loop a standard for loop this loop will run one uh, ten times and here we have written a condition if i uh, modulus 2 equal to 0 that means if uh, the div after the division if there is no remainder that means 0 then continue here continue statement means that don't go the remaining statement just continue from the loop from here if i run this program you see it is showing the odd numbers from the range 0 to 10 so here you have seen that 1 3 5 7 9 so the first time i equals 0 and 0 less than 10 so 0 remainder 2 equal to 0 that's why this condition made true so the continue statement executed and the uh, and the loop goes to here so i becomes 1 and then the condition is again checking if as 1 is less than 10 and within the body if uh, 1 remainder 2 equal to 0 it is not true that's why this condition did did not meet for the second time that's why we have seen this one is printing in here so this is how this continuous statement works within a for loop there are three built-in collection type in dart programming language list set and map so list basically is an ordered collection of values so it is in some programming language is called array but in dart programming language it is called list so suppose we want to define a list and we can do that using list class so when we define list list and then we define a variable so that means this names is an object of list class and here using the shortcut way that is means using the square bracket we can define some value like jack and jill so these two are string items within this list so if we want to access 
each of these value we can do that so basically in list the first item is indexed in zero the second item is one and this is how it goes so if i want to access the first item from this list we have to write print names then square bracket zero if i run this program you see it is showing jack because jack is stayed within the position or index at zero if i print one and run the program again in this case it is showing jill if we want to know the number of element existing in the list we can use the length property of the list object so here we are printing names dot length so let's run the program you see it is showing two that means this list object names contains two items instead of list if i just put var here and if i run this program you see it works in this case the compiler by type inference will know that this names list is a string type list item so if i put my cursor in here you see it is showing list angle bracket string that means this names is a list and it is known in by the type inference if we want to access each of this item we can do that by using any for loop but normally in this case uh, you can use the for in loop so for bar n in names and print n so if i run this program you see jack and jill is printed if i want to use mixed item that means some values will be string some value may be double some values may be integer we can do that as well so 10 100.1 and if i run this program you see each of this value is printed and if i put my cursor in here you see now it is showing list and within angle bracket object but if we want that this list should be a string type we can do that by uh, defining the inst uh, replacing this bar by list and within angle bracket we define is a string in that case if you put any value other than a string it will show an error so this is a statically typed names list that means you cannot put other type instead of a string if i run this program you see it is showing now jack and jill so for statically typed uh, list you can just put a angle bracket after the keyword list and put the type in here this list is a mutable type so that means if uh, we want to change the value of the index one we can do that so names one uh, instead of jill we type like uh, mark and if i run this program you see now it is showing jack and mark so the value is replaced with a new value but if we want to define each of these value is constant that means we do not want to change it at runtime we can do that easily by just putting the const keyword before the square bracket if i uh, use this program now and run you see it is showing an error that unsupported operation because you cannot change a constant value at runtime if i remove this part clear the screen and run the program again you see there is no error in that case suppose we want to copy a list to a another list hmm. we can how we can do that for example let's define another list or just var names two and if i just assign this names one i mean the names part and if we access this names to and run this program you see we can still access the value jack and jill but basically when you assign a object like list within another object it's actually not copied instead this names to accessing the names value so suppose if i change the value of names after assigning this suppose i change the value of names one equal to mark and if i run this program again you see we get that updated value 
we are changing that value replace the value of jill by mark in the names variable and we are looping the names to variable but we can still see this updated value like jack and mark so this is not still this is not actually copying rather both names to and names pointing the same list of items so instead of doing that if we want to really clone the list what we can do that using a spread operator in dart 2.3 we can do that easily so here we just put a square bracket and then three dot and then the first variable name so names one so if i just run this program again you see in this case when we looping names to we are actually getting the old value jack and jill basically in this case names to and names does not point to the same list of item both names and names to are totally different items list items so this spread operator is similar like javascript i first saw this three dot spread operator in javascript and this three dot or spread operator is introduced in dart 2.3 set in dart programming language is an unordered collection of unique items and dart support for set is provided by set literals and the set type so suppose we defining a set by var keyword var uh, hello james and here we have to use the curly braces and within curly braces we want to put some string value so we can type uh, fluorine and then chlorine hmm, two values so these are basically unique items if i copied this fluorine again after the comma and if i loop this program so for var x in hello james and print x and if i run this program you see it is only showing fluoros uh, fluorine and chlorine so this fluorine if we put it two times but it is actually stored one time because by definition set is an unique collection of items there is another way to define set if you want to define an empty set you cannot just put like this suppose we want to put an empty set mm, just remove this for loop and remove this uh, curly braces the items of this curly braces if i just type print hello james uh, runtime type and if i run this program you see in these cases we thought that it should be set type but instead it become a uh, linked hash map type hmm. so if you want to define a empty set if you want to define an empty set you must have to uh, define the type name in here like you have to put if i just put a string here within angle bracket now you see it is showing hash set so just empty curly braces means hash map but when you uh, define a type before the curly brace then it it uh, become a hash set and another way to define hash set is like this that uh, using the set keyword that means set class using the set class then you can also put this string thing in here set string and then if i put a names and curly braces and if i uh, check the names runtime type you see it is also has set so either way you can define an empty has set in dart programming language in dart programming language map basically is a collection of key value pair of items in some programming language like in python it is called dictionary so let's define a map in dart programming language so here i have defined a map uh, gifts and the key of each of the item is a string so here i have defined within single quote first uh, which uh, by this key we are putting value uh, patrice then second tart loves and fifth golden rings if i want to access each of this item we can do that easily like prints gifts 
and this is also an order and if we want to access any of this value we have to use the key so for example here i am i want to use the key fifth and if i run this program you see it is showing golden ring so this is how we can create map in dart programming language another thing is that you can also use integer value as key for example two one three and in this case we also remove this fifth and instead we just put one and run this program you say you see that it also works without any issue if you want to define an empty set uh, sorry if you want to define an empty map you can do that using the map class so here we are defining gift as a and uh, we want to uh, create an instance of map in here and assign in the gifts and now we want to add uh, key value pairs by ourselves we can do that by easily like gifts then within square bucket we can put the key suppose here uh, first as a key and the value suppose mango and if i run this program gifts first you see it works so this is how we can uh, create a map in dart programming language another way we can do that using uh, curly braces and there we have to put the key and the value together for example here first and within after colon we have to put like mango the value then another key so this basically key and this is the value so this two item becomes a key value pair as a one item within the map so in the second key we want to put another value like jackfruit and now we want if we want to access any of this value like gifts second and if i run this program you see it is showing jackfruit so this is how we can create a map in dart programming language In Dart programming language, each function is an object of class function, where f is the capital letter. So let's define a function. For example, we want to define a function as a square, which we can use to square any integer or num type, uh, any integer or double value. So for this reason, we want the return type should be dynamic. So when you define a function at the first uh, first part you have to define the type which it will return if there is this if a function does not return anything you can use void or you can skip the void which means it does not return anything so in this case we are putting dynamic then the function name is square we also take any value so this function can take parameter so if we want to if you want that a function take parameter we have to define that so here we are defining bar num so this function will take a parameter as num and this function will return the num into num so whatever we pass any valid integer or double value in this square function it will multiply that by the same value and return the value so let's define another function for example void show output and here we take an, a, uh, define a variable as parameter bar message. So this function takes message as parameter and using the built-in print function, it will print the uh, message as in the terminal. So now let's call this function first, show output. And within this function, we want to use this function square. So here we are typing square where we are putting two. If I run this program, you see it is showing four. Then we use the same uh, statement, but in this case we are putting 2.5 and let's run this program. You see now it is showing four and 6.25. As we define this function, this is square function as dynamic. So that means this function can return any type of num value like any type of uh, integer or double value and another thing if i just type print and square this function name we, without parenthesis and runtime uh, runtime type 
and let's run this program you see uh, this is showing that this function square is a dynamic type in dart programming language uh, there is a shortcut way to defining a function which is a one line statement so for example here in dart programming language you have to use a equal sign and greater than uh, sign together to make a arrow this is called fat arrow and sometimes called fat arrow expression so here we defined a full function right the dynamic square varnum and within curly braces we define a body we can make it we can make it shorter using arrow function so instead of this uh, just remove this arrow part and return part and just put a arrow here so here what we are defining that uh, dynamic square var num then arrow expression num multiply num so when you write an arrow function like this way the result of the value after the computation will automatically return so if i save this program and run again you see this program works as like before a function that has no name or in short you can call nameless function is called anonymous function in dart programming language in some other programming language like in python it is called lambda or in some programming language it is called closer so here let's define a list uh, with some string values of item and we want to use the for each function of this list so let's type list dot for each this is a higher order function because for each function cat can take other function as parameter so within the body we will define a anonymous function so uh, before defining anonymous function in here let's define a named function so suppose i am defining a function void print f which take a parameter item and just using the print built-in function it just uh, print the value of the item variable in the screen and here we just want to pass this printf function as reference so if i run this program you see it is showing apple bananas and orange but in this case or sometimes when you define a for each function with a shorthand function then in many cases computer programmers do not define a name function instead they prefer to use anonymous function within the places so to do that let's cut this part and remove the named function part and here remove this printf and put that thing in here so if i save this program clear the screen and run the program again you see it works so that means this function is an anonymous function because this function does not have any name there are two types of parameters in function in dart programming language like python programming language so one type of parameter is called positional parameter or positional argument and the second type is called named parameter or named argument so let's see the positional argument or positional parameter first so here we are defining an arrow function which takes two parameter so in this case we are using the positional argument so here num1 is the first position num2 is the second position and we just returning after combining the value if i run this program you see it works it is showing four now here if you look carefully you see that when we call this sum method we just passing the value and we expect that these two will be assigned in num1 and these two will be assigned in num2 because we are using the positional argument or, or positional parameter let's convert this function this arrow function to named parameter so in that case we have to use the curly braces here so we want that these two parameters should be as name parameter and when i put curly braces in here you see it is showing red color in here so if i just remove this thing 
and if I call sum, now you see that it is showing num1 and num2. If I put num, for example, in this case, if I want to put num2 first, so I have write, written num2 colon, then suppose 4, and then I want to put num1, suppose 2. If I save this program and run this again, you see it is showing 6. So when you are using named parameter, you have to use the name of the parameter when you are calling the function and this basically works for not only arrow function but also for a general function another interesting thing of name parameter is that by default named parameter is optional and we can also mix positional parameter and named parameter together for example in this case we want to change a bit we want that the num2 is only named parameter but the num1 is positional parameter and num2 may be optional hmm, right so in this case when we want to call this function sum then uh, we have to put the value as the first parameter suppose i am putting 10 and as this named parameter for this name parameter i use the name num2 and suppose i put 2 and if i run this program you see it is showing 12 but i told before that when you define a variable sorry when you define a parameter as named parameter by default that is optional that means if you do not provide any value for num2 it should work right but it is crashing why we defining this num2 parameter as optional by defining this as a named parameter but when there is no value but we are still accessing this value so as this num2 may be optional what we can do we can write a conditional uh, null our operator like double colon zero so if i if I change this modification in here and if I run this program again you see it is also showing an error because I think I have to put a uh, parenthesis to give the priority and now if I run this program again you see there is no error so in this case when we do not provide the named parameter value and in the function body we are checking that whether num2 is null or not if it is now then just pass the default value as zero otherwise uh, if there is any value just use that so if i again use this statement print and sum and here i put another value 10 to and num2 so you see it is showing 10 and 12 if you want that if no value is provided we can use any default value so instead of using this we can do a shortcut default value parameter so here after num2 we put a equal sign and put a default value so if we change this function here and if i run this program again you see there is no error because when there is no parameter uh, no value for num2 parameter it is using the 0 in here so 0 plus 10 that is 10 and when we pass any value like 2 then in this case the default value will not be used and 10 plus 2 will be 12 so this is showing in here i told that by definition named parameter are optional right but if you are using a positional parameter and you want to make any of them as optional then how you can do that so for example here we want to make this num2 as optional but this is a positional argument or positional parameter so to make it optional we just have to put a square bracket outside of the parameter and now this num2 become optional so if i run this program you see it is showing 4 and 2 so at the first time we are passing two values and the second time we are passing one value so in that case that num2 become null and here as a, we are using null error operator so the default value 0 will be used in the second case
In object oriented programming, class is a very important topic. Using class, we can define our own custom type. We can encapsulate the related values and related methods together. And when you define a class, you can inherit to make some subclass. Also, uh, you can do some other thing like you can use polymorphism. You can reuse your object oriented code for other purpose. So in Dart programming language, we can create a custom type using the class keyword. So let's define a class. So here we are defining a class named person. So to define a class in Dart, you have to use the keyword class, then the class name. And within curly braces, we are defining the body. So basically class is a blueprint for an actual object. This is not object. This is we are defining the type. That means we are defining a person class or person type and later in the main function we will use the object of this person class so in this person class or blueprint we want that a person should have a name a person should have a age just basic to type okay and now let's define a method in here so when you define a function within a class that is called method so here we are defining a method void this function or this method returns nothing and then show output the function name which is called method name in the context of class and this method does not take any parameter and it just print the value of name and age and now let's uh, create an object so here we can create object in two ways now suppose we want to use this person name in here so person class name in here and then person one and then person so when you use the parenthesis after the class name basically it will instantiate an object and assign that object to this person one object variable right so if i just want to access this show output method i can write person one dot show output basically it will print nothing uh, i mean two null if we want to access this variable name and age we can do that like person one dot name suppose my name mahamud and person one dot age my age suppose 35 so if i run this program again it is showing mahamud and 35 now let's create another person object but before that we want to use a constructor which is called default constructor so what is that so let's define a constructor so basically constructor is also a method without any return type so and in dart programming language you have to use the class name as constructor name so here we are want to defining a constructor and constructor method is automatically automatically called when you instantiate an object so here in this case we want to pass two parameter is string name and the second parameter is optional int age and by default it should be 18 if there is no age is provided and as this name uh, parameter name and the class properties name are same to if we want to access the objects or instance uh, fields we in this case we have to use the this keyword this means this objects name or this objects age also we can call this uh, using this we can also call the uh, method defined within the class so here we want to use this dot name equals name and this dot age equals age so if any name and age is provided when we create the instance of a class we will pass the values and the values will be assigned the object or instance fields so now when we define a constructor you see now it is showing an error because it expects that i have to pass at least one name so here i just passed suppose mahamud and after saving the program if i run this program you see it is showing mahamud and 18 because i did not pass any uh, age that's why it is taking the default value but if i pass any age like 35 
you see now it is showing mamo 35 so this is called default constructor another shortcut way to write a constructor basically constructor is using to assign some values when the class instance is created if the parameter name is same as the properties or fields name within the class we can use the shortcut way so instead using this body we can just use here uh, this dot name and here this dot is and a default value so if I run this program again, you see it works. And in case if I do not want to provide this 35 and run this program again, you see it works again, it is showing Mahmoud 18. So if in your constructor, other than initializing the values, you want to do something else. If there is no other thing you want to do within the constructor body, you can skip that curly braces part and only use this way to shortcut the constructor. Let's define another object. So in this case, I am going to using the var keyword and person two, and I give the person I want to name Jack and the age is suppose 25 and let's person two and call the show output method. Let's clear the screen and let's run the program. You see in the first case, it is showing Mahmoud 18 and the second case, it is showing Jack 25. So basically this person one and person two is totally different instance of the same class that is person class. And here as we are using var keyword, but in the right side after equal sign, we are using the person class. So using the type inference, the compiler, the compiler will automatically know that this person two basically an object of the person class. Other than default constructor, there is another constructor that is called named constructor. So when you define a constructor like this way, like the class name as the constructor, then this constructor will automatically, that is why it is called default constructor. But sometimes we may need uh, to instantiate an object of a class with some different kinds of values, right? Then how we can do that? There is another way, suppose we want to define a named constructor. If you defined other constructor besides the default constructor that is called named constructor. To define a named constructor, you, you have to use the class name. So here person, then you have to put a dot and then the constructor name. So we want to name the constructor as guest. And here we want to assign some values. So here name equal to guest and age equal to 18. Okay, so let's create another object var person3 person and dot guest. In this case, you see, I am not passing any values. That's why it is not calling that default constructor. Instead, it is I am calling the guest constructor. And if I run this person3 dot show output method and run this program, you see in the third cases, it is showing guest and 18 for the person three object. So this is how we can create other constructor beside default constructor. Uh, normally what happen when we uh, define a variable either explicitly or within a class, we can change the value at any time if we want, right? But if we want that, we will define a field or properties or variable within a class and that will be unchangeable after initializing, then we can do that by using the final keyword. So here we define a class, class X, capital X, and within the class, in the body, we are defining a variable named name. So, and we are using the keyword final and then we are defining another variable named age where we have assigned 10 and before defining the variable we are using the keyword static and cons so i will discuss all of these three things final static and static const and then within the class default constructor we are just assigning the value passing to the constructor in the named variable so let's create an object so var x 
x capital x and then pass the value jack hmm and now if i print x dot uh, name and run this program you see it is showing jack so suppose i want to change the value of name x dot name equals something else like jill and i want to print the x dot name again basically it is showing that name can be used as a setter because it is final so the dart extension in this visual studio code editor can detect that error but if i just remove this final thing and just use var name and run this program you see first time it is showing jack and the second time it is showing jill so the key point here is that if you want to define any properties uh, as a constant you can use the final keyword and using the default constructor when you assign the value you cannot change the value after assigning it the in the second time so only first time you can assign the value using the default constructor or any named constructor there is two way to define a value when we defining a variable as constant one is using final keyword another is using const keyword when you are using const keyword that is a compile time constant it cannot be changed anytime at or at runtime but when you are using final keyword within a class you can change it using the constructor so this is possible at runtime and if you want to use any const constant value using the constructor within a class you must have to put a static in front of that const uh, in front of that const variable so here we are using a static const int s10 and if i want to access the value of age we can write print x dot age and it will not work because this is a compile time constant and we are using it in the class and as this is a static variable we have to use the class name to access the property and this is called class property this name is called object property because this name is different for different object but the static property is same for all object or all instance but that and it, because it's a class property so here you have to put the capital x dot age and if i run this program you see it is showing 10 so suppose i want to create another object var x suppose var y equal to x jill and y print uh, print uh, y dot name and you see that for x object and y object the name value is different but as this property is based on class so we have to access that property using the class name dot property and this is same for all instance so the age 10 is is same for both x object and y object if we want to use the const and final outside of the class we can also do this so let's remove this class part and remove this thing and suppose we want to define two constant values so final uh, var name suppose the name is something mahmoud and in this case you do not have to use the var because it is uh, this name will be uh, be a string by type inference and let's define another value const uh, name suppose age equal to 30 hmm. let's print name and print age and if i run this program after clearing the terminal you see it works and we cannot change any of this name equal to something else cannot possible also age equal to something uh, cannot possible it will be showing an error because here you see it is showing that name is a final variable and age is also a constant variable which cannot be reassigned and in this case outside of the class both final and const actually works like same there is no difference so you can use anything a final or const outside of the class when we define a class and later we want to add some extra feature within the class but that extra feature is not required for all the instance of the original class then we can use the class inheritance and in dart program using the extend keywords you can 
inherit a class so here we are defining a class vehicle where there is two property model and year and in the default constructor we when we pass a model and year in this default constructor we are assigning that model value using this dot model will be in this model and this dot year the passing year will be assigned in year and within the default constructor body we are just printing the model and year nothing else and there is another method show output just it prints the model and year if we want to use this here that's also okay basically this means that the instance which it is called now we are defining another class class car and that inherit this vehicle class right by using the extend keyword and here we are defining a new property that is called double price and in this default constructor hmm, in the car constructor what we are do we are taking three parameter right a string dot a string model year and this dot price so here here the, there is an interesting thing so the interesting thing is that this price is the new thing of this car but this car as inherit the vehicle so this model and year also existed within the car class so what we are doing we are uh, when we create an instance of this car class we are assigning the price value directly in this uh, variable using the this dot price but for the model and year we want to pass that value values using in the vehicle constructor and to do that in dart you have to use a colon operator after the parenthesis of the sub class default constructor and you have to use the super keyword and using super keyword you have to pass the value so here when we are uh, calling this after colon we are calling this super then within parenthesis model and here this model and here will be passed to this constructor vehicle right so and in this car class we are also defining a method show output and in the show output we want to call this method that means super class method and he, here we are calling this super keyword we are using this super keyword then dot then the method name so basically super dot show output means we are calling this method the super class method and then we are printing the this car's price now here we are creating an object car1 equals car not vehicle object we are creating a car one car object we are passing accord as a model 2014 as the year and 150,000 as the price and then we are calling car one show output so if i run this program you see it is showing accord 2014 because when the instance of this car is created then we are calling basically this car constructor and here we are passing three value right accord 2014 and 150,000 so two accord will be in here 2014 will be here positional argument and 150,000 will be here and as we are using this dot price and there is a property name price as the same name so this 150,000 will be assigned as a price of this car and after colon on the default constructor as we are calling super model here this accord and 2014 will be passed to this vehicle and will be assigned this model and year and then when we call this car one dot show output you will see this method is called here we are calling the super method super class method show output where it will be printed model and year so you see here model and year is printed and then this uh price is printed in here so we are seeing this price in here so this is how we can uh, inherit or extend a super class to mean uh, to a subclass method overriding is suppose in a class there is a method and in the subclass is here in y class extend this s class we want the same method to redefine that is called method overriding if you want that other programmers know that this method is overriding you can use at override annotation so when you use at override in front above a method signature that means the compiler will know that this method is overriding and in any case there is no method of the original name it will show an error that uh, method does not override an inherited method this is basically a safety feature in dart programming language 
when you overriding a method you if you do not use the at override keyword it will not uh, show an error there is no issue for this you have to use override when you don't have control of superclass method implementation basically the intent of the override notation is to catch situation where a superclass renames a member an independent subclass which used to override the member could silently continue working with the superclass implementation so the good practice is if you override a superclass method you just use the at override annotation getters and setters are a special method that provide read and write access to an object properties normally each instance variable has an implicit getter plus a setter if appropriate but if you want you can create additional properties by implementing getters and setters using the get and set keyword so here we define a class rectangle where we are using the num object so basically num means it's an uh, it's a type and that that is inherited by the integer and double type so here we are defining num left top width and height so the value of left top width and height can be integer or double and in the default constructor we are just assigning the values passed and assign in the properties now we are defining two getters that is right and bottom and two setter for each of them so to defining a getter we are defining a uh, right uh, getter name right and use the get keyword before the name and then we are uh, providing the return type and here we are using an arrow function and it will what it will do if we call this right getter we will get left plus width these two variables data and we will get this value and if we want to uh, make a setter we have to use the set keyword and the uh, setter name so here it is right and we are passing any value num value and we are putting the left value so using the arrow function what we are doing we are assigning left equals value minus width so we have a uh, we are passing a value right and what we are doing we are doing a customization so we are uh, we are uh, minusing that width value from the value and that assigning that value in the left variable within the class similarly we are doing the same thing as for bottom and now we are creating an object rect uh, using the rectangle class name and passing some values and then we are printing the rect dot left value let's run this program we are seeing that the left value is 3 and then we are pa we are calling the getter method that is right so rect dot right equals 12 when we defining a method we have to use the parenthesis but when we are using the getter or setter uh, we do not need to use any uh, parenthesis like when we want to access any getter we just have to use the dot operator and when we want to use a setter we just uh, call the setter name and the equal sign and in that case the value will be assigned as a setter so here when we are calling rec dot write equals 12 so that 12 comes in here and uh, value minus so value is 12 and uh, it minus width so width is here that is 20 so uh, value is 12 12 minus 20 equals minus 8 so that's why when we are printing reg dot left we are getting this minus 8 output so this is how we can define getter and setter in dart programming language exception handling is a feature in a programming language by which we can know that if there is any runtime problem occurred or not so in dart if we want to use exception handling we can use the throw try catch finally keyword so suppose here we are defining a function must greater than zero so this function if it gets a value greater than zero then there is no problem it will return the value but if it gets a value uh, equal to zero or less than zero then it will throw an exception and to throw an exception you have to use the throw keyword and the exception class name and within the exception class name you can provide a message you see that the, the uh, method definition is showing, uh, showing above the cursor if a function throws an exception you have to catch that otherwise the program will terminated so we defining another function let verify the value where we can pass any value and 
uh, within the function we are defining a value verification variable where we will assign a value assign the value so as this math function must greater than zero can throw an exception so we have to define this function within the try block so here within the try block we are using value verification e equal must greater than zero and we are passing the value so if there is an error occurred then we are just printing the error by catching the error in here catch within the parentheses we can uh, catch any type of exception here and then in the finally block which is basically an optional block we are checking something like if this value verification is null because if in any case if this uh, must greater than zero function returns an error then in that case this value verification will be null right by definition it is null and if it's success then it will uh, this variable will get the value so in the finally block we are checking that if that is null that we are printing value is not accepted otherwise we are uh, printing value verified and the using the string interpolation we are passing the value so let's run this program you see in first cases it is showing value 10 but when uh, we uh, in the second case when we are passing the value 0 in the first case it is printing value verified by 10 but in the second case it is uh, this catch block basically captured this exception that value uh, must be greater than 0 you see this this message is printing in here but after the exception word and then in the finally block we also uh, captured uh, the value I mean the message and here it is printed value is not accepted basically when you use the catch keyword and uh, within the parentheses you use any parameter like e it basically handles all kinds of error but if your program has a specific type of error you can use the on keyword so after the try block you have to use on then the exception name then if you have another type of error then you can use on and that exception name and sometimes uh, anything else that is an exception you can use like this on exception catch e so this is another pattern but normally i prefer uh, or in the most cases i use the try catch block or try catch finally block i normally do not use the on exception thing unless it is very important for the particular program so I hope that this tutorial will help you to understand Dart programming language and you can able to dive deep in Flutter framework. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and if you have any question, please ask in the comment section. I also welcome you to visit my personal YouTube channel where I regularly publish programming related video tutorials. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.